you know, I'm a local boy from Hilo. Most of the days I'm in surf shorts and slippers and t-shirt. And uh, here I am with these visitors. There was a visitor that came from, uh, from Calgary <laughs> into our restaurants and visiting me in the, in the middle of this ocean, just like the, the worldwide recognition of just being out there for doing something that I love. Cooking has been his passion since small kid times, when he had to climb up on a chair to get next to the stovetop so he could stir the sime in. Meet this award-winning Maui chef, next on Long Story Short. One-on-one, -on -one, engaging conversations with some of Hawaii's most intriguing people. Long Story Short with Leslie Wilcox. Aloha my kako, I'm Leslie Wilcox. Island chef Sheldon Simeon grew up with a father who could laugh, make small talk, and cook for everyone in their extended family at the same time. Sheldon brought that neighborhood family feeling to the nation when he appeared twice on the TV show Top Chef and was an audience favorite. Since then, he's owned his own restaurants and won numerous cooking honors. Raised on the Big Island, Sheldon secured his first cooking job at age 16 at Pizza Hut. After graduating from Hilo High, he went on to culinary school on Oahu and later settled in Maui. As a child, he says that it felt natural for him to help his father prepare food for hundreds of people before he was even tall enough to reach the top of the stove. My family was always the, the cooking family, you know, for any baby luau's and graduation parties, and even our house was always the gathering place, so holidays were spent there, and grandma's birthdays were, were sung at, at our house, and uh, there was always something, somebody over our house, and we're always cooking. How did that start? Uh, well, my, my, my parents were amazing cooks. Uh, I mean, family is everything to us, so we keep our, all our family very close. And uh, yeah, uh, my dad has always been, from when I was young, always the guy that would cook for these large parties. So. It was your dad. And I, I understand your mom was sick. Yeah, my mom uh, had, uh, had a stroke when we were very young. And so she stopped working for a little bit, and my dad worked a lot. Uh, but When he worked a lot and your mom was not well, who cooked? Uh, me and my brother. How old were you? <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I remember we'd have to cook Simon with the with a chair by the stove when we would be cooking, you know, for ourselves. But uh, he'd always give us instructions, like go take out the meat from the freezer and make sure it's defrosted, and you gotta cook something. So we're cooking, we're cooking food dinners by the time we're in elementary school. Uh, Did you like it? Ah, uh, yeah, we loved, uh, maybe not notice me like loving it. We knew that that was something that we, we did. I guess uh, like recognizing our love for it was um, when I went into culinary school, it's like, okay, it comes natural to me. So. And your brother went to culinary school too. <laughs> also went to culinary school, uh, both of us. And I guess that was, that was a perfect pathway from all our years of cooking. And what did you cook for your family when you were kids? Besides uh, Simon. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, shoot, it's Filipino food. So uh, alongside with, uh, we, we grew up with our grandparents too, a lot at their house. So a lot of time spent in the yard picking vegetables and uh, cooking stuff like pinakbet, which is like a Filipino vegetable stew. Uh, it's a lot of local food. Yes. Uh, and it just you, soups and beef stew and, and all of that. Was there anything that you thought was too hard to cook? I can't do that. Uh, no, we'd always, there's always a, a way to figure it out, I guess. I don't think that we ever looked at a recipe or we never even knew recipes. It was like, okay, that's how dad did it. Let's, let's do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you figure out how, yeah, about how long to cook and turn down the, the heat and all that stuff. Yeah, we're, we're right alongside our parents the whole way. My spoon in our mouth tasting from a very young age of understanding all of that. We cook for these large, you know, in Hawaii we celebrate them. When we, when we do graduation parties and first birthdays, it's, it's this big celebration. So cooking for parties of 300, 400 was, was normal for us. And uh, my dad had all of these walks, these big siliases from, uh, handed down from my grandfather that we've always cooked out of. 
So as, as we got older and, and taller, the, the, the spoon became shorter. <laughs> but uh, I remember stirring the pot when we were like, like, like this. I would have trouble figuring out how much stuff do you need to cook for 300? I, I wouldn't have any idea, but you, you have a sense of what the, how much that is? Right, uh, just, uh, I don't know, it, was, it just came natural. My dad's and my parents, uh, my, mom, my family has been doing it for so long that it's like always, okay, this is what it is, and everyone's around doing what needs to be done. Who's doing the dishes? Oh, <laughs> there's a lot of that going on too. Uh, that's equally uh, a responsibility. You've always been competitive, not yeah. just in food and cooking? Yeah, I've always been competitive. Uh, uh, did karate for, for most of our, our young life uh, growing up. Uh, volleyball and, and played music and did all that stuff. So I was involved in doing stuff. But uh, but it was always me and my brother. It was like, I think about it, like we're always cooking, always doing something in a very strict household. You know? Mom, dad was always working, so we'd always, always have to do a lot of chores around the house and uh, make sure everything was done. Hilo High, what happens after Hilo High? Uh, Hilo High, I go to move to here to Waipahu to live with my auntie and uh, Leeward Community College, their culinary program there. Did an internship at Walt Disney World halfway through uh, where I met a Maui girl. Okay, how did you meet? We met at the bus stop, which was weird because uh, she stayed late that for her shift, and I was sent. Uh, I went home early. You're both local, local yeah. young people working yeah, on the mainland, working in, in Florida, in, in Orlando. You know, you just like, hey, <laughs> you kind of recognize each other that you are from Hawaii. So yeah. Who kinda, spoke first? Uh, she did. Uh, she said, "Are you from Hawaii?" Uh, she kind of invited herself over to to my. my <laughs> My place, uh, I lived in the new complex and uh, she wanted to check the place out. And uh, luckily for her, it was uh, a few days after Valentine's, uh, me and a couple of the other Hawaii boys decided to cook uh, local food for all the girls in our <laughs> complex. And I had some leftover chicken long rice to, to feed Janice. And uh, I guess love at first bite. <laughs> so, I don't know. So did you go back to Leeward Community College when you met the Maui girl? So we turned back for one semester of, uh, at Leeward and then moved, moved to Maui. Well, and now children? Now four children later, wow. in a restaurant together. It's quite the bus stop meeting. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, I went to Disney to meet my princess and there. She got to meet her Prince Charming. <laughs> there you go. Sheldon Simeon found work in a restaurant on Maui as an entry-level dishwasher. From there, he worked his way up until his talent started drawing national attention, including from producers at Bravo TV. They invited him to compete on Top Chef. This is your third island you're living on because you're from Hilo to Oahu, now Maui, where yeah. your, your wife lives. And, and, and what's, what's the plan once you get to Maui? I was actually going to school in Leeward. And I was visiting my wife at that time, and I wanted to go eat at a local food spot. And uh, we visited uh, Aloha Mixed Plate in Lahaina. And prior to that, jokingly, if I could, I joked with my wife, okay, if I could find a job, okay, I'll move to Maui. And I had a friend from high school working at uh, Aloha Mixed Plate. Uh, asked for a, a job. He said, let me get the chef. I did an interview on the spot. And uh, he said, when can you start? I said, I'll be back in a week. I packed my stuff up and uh, started. There was my life on Maui, so that's where it started. Did you start as a chef? Uh, st started as a dishwasher prep cook. All young, going to enroll at uh, Maui Community College, start that job on the found a small apartment and uh, just be stoked on that. And then I, I stayed with that company for, for 10 years. And it gave me a lot of opportunity to uh, work my way up from a, from a dishwasher to chef. And did you like it as you went along? Because at any given point, you could say, <laughs> oh, I think I'll get off here. Yeah, uh, and that's what's amazing about our, our uh, profession is that there's so many different parts and just constantly learning. Well, how did you get national attention? How did that start happening? Oh, man, I don't know. I've always just been a type of person to just put my head down and work and 
started to get recognized for, I guess, the hard work. Uh, it started off at Star Noodle, uh, where we had an amazing team of people that wanted to do like a New York style uh, noodle shop out there in Maui. It was, it was part of the company that I was with, uh, okay. with Aloha Mixed Plate and Odlahaina Luau. So we were opening up a new restaurant and uh, uh, they gave me the opportunity to be a chef. I was like my first like, real actually exec chef job. And what do you think you brought to it that another chef would not have? What, what was the distinction in your case? Yeah. I really think I, I, I put a, a local lens on it. Uh, I really use my local upbringing as an inspiration and uh, try to put storytelling into every dish of things that inspired that dish and really go into the history of the dishes. And uh, yeah, I was just very meticulous on everything. I just worked with the team to, to make sure that everything was always executed as the best that we could. But always local, with with something that yeah, with made a twist. it stand out from my uncle's house, for example. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, always uh, using the best uh, ingredients, uh, using some techniques that we might have seen or we learned along the way in our career, and, uh, and applying it to that. When we opened up Star Noodle, it was like noodles was the, the hottest trend. It was like all momofuku and all the noodle bars in New York was everything. And we knew that that was... Locals love noodles, so it was a easy restaurant to transition for these locals to, to come and enjoy. When you can cook local food here, it's a range of cultures. Yeah. You know, I mean, you've covered a lot of ground. It's not like you're closed to the world. <laughs> right, right, right. It's, uh, we get to pick and choose. So that's what's amazing about Hawaii food is that you're crazy if you think it's going to be boring because it, I might be Filipino, but... Uh, Korean flavors, Chinese flavors, you know, Portuguese flavors are all, all part of my, uh, part of being me. <laughs> Seems like the people who really get places are celebrity chefs, but that's on top of cooking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, this industry started for individuals who are more, more introverts, right? We could be in the back just doing our thing, and, but now it's, it's about being out there and putting yourself out there. That's part of being successful. So. I'm sure that uh, Top Chef competition to two times was extremely time consuming and, and probably occupied every molecule of your brain, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a huge sacrifice. Uh, and although at that time it was like seven weeks of your time without, with no, no uh, type of uh, way to get to the outside world. There's no, no communication with the wife or, or your businesses. So you're just right there, all in there. And, and what was it like being with the other chefs and, and the rules? <laughs> it's fun. Uh, the, first, the first time around, I'm, I'm fortunate that I got to do two, two give, got a second try. So at, uh, but the camera's always in there, always there, and that's, that's hard to get used to. And then we're all there sacrificing, being away from our loved ones, and we all want to win. So it's, it's competition. Do people do bad things like steal the ingredients and... You know, yeah, the but there's, a, there's definitely a little bit of that going on in between. But for the most part, we try to just showcase our skills. And we all understand that it's already difficult as it is. We don't need to be like doing that. But uh, there's some tricks that uh, get you ahead for sure. <laughs> that you didn't do, right? Oh, uh, maybe not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the other thing. The, the camera never blinks. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then it's, it's, that's an interesting... Um, you know, collegi it's, a, it's a collegial feel, but you're all in competition, so it's, it must be unsettling. Yeah, yeah, knowing that, okay. You can't relax. Right, yeah. because it's, it's, it's just this constant that your, your mind is always thinking about the competition. But uh, you get close to those people, because it's such an intense moment of your life that only a certain handful of people understand, will ever understand it. So you get close with those guys. Uh, it was weird. It's weird to, to go through that process, especially going back to, to my wife who we, we share everything, right? And here it is, a, a moment in your life that is so significant and not done with, with her. So it is, it's, it's still a weird dynamic to, to think about it. To be on Top Chef, I bet you have to be communicative and vocal and uh, interesting. Yeah, it's a, definitely a part of my life that I've had to learn. 
Uh, really, you weren't always like this. You're so you're you're affable. You're friendly. You're no. relaxed. Yeah, I think. Oh man, I was a mess. If you watch my early early videos uh, from it, uh, I was definitely nervous. Um, you get comfortable. Uh, I put the same effort into like learning this side of it that was as part of being a chef. So I was like, oh, okay, you better get comfortable with doing this. Well, how would you have spoken before if you hadn't put effort into the, you know, being a personality? Yeah, oh, no. I still have trouble finishing my sentences and all of that, but uh, it's still just the more you do it, the more comfortable you get uh, before. It was, I was always intimidated, especially when I would see someone going up or I'd always put myself and I'd always uh, look at somebody else and like, man, I wish I could do that. And always, so, oh man, I'm thinking about putting me back in the moment where I'm, I'm nervous again. So see, this is, this is just how it is. Well, I think about that. <laughs> and when you cook with family and friends, you don't really have to say much. No. You just enjoy, right? But but when you're facing a, an audience, uh, as you did on a yeah. network TV, you have to explain what you're doing, and you have to relate to your you know fellow exactly. competitors. Oh, well, always in the back of my mind is like, okay, this is your moment. You were put there for a reason. Uh, it's like capture it, and uh, here's your moment to to share what you love and what you do. So if you're just speaking. And you just, again, same thing with cooking, speak from the heart, it'll, it'll come out and it'll, it'll show. When you were on Top Chef, um, you decided not to go with your roots and you decided to do something different with quail, I think it was. <laughs> yeah. So, and that didn't work out the way you intended. Right, well, and uh, for the whole season, I was just like, always thinking of that, okay, one trick pony, you know, that's, that's the food that I cook is only one, this one step, is one, this one thing, and, uh, you know, it's a competition. It was the first time being out in front of everyone and putting yourself on the line uh, that you start to think of what do I need to be to, to uh, move forward. And uh, I thought it was like, okay, branching out and doing something different. And in the end, it wasn't it. I'm glad, I'm so fortunate and thankful for the time that I did, had that moment to go out and explore and, and try new things. But uh, it was a good lesson. It's always uh, just be yourself and that's it. It always shines through. Sheldon Simeon didn't win Top Chef, but he did win Fan Fave both times. Since then, he's received local and national recognition, including earning semi-finalist honors for the prestigious James Beard Foundation's Best New Restaurant Award. That was for his Wailea restaurant, Lineage. Yet in early 2020, with his career on fire, Sheldon Simeon made a heart-wrenching decision to take a step back. The very thing that inspired me about Lineage was family. Speaking about my family, talking about our family traditions, the things that I did growing up with my father and my grandfather, and preaching that to the to public and to media. And here I am being a hypocrite, not even spending time with my own family. So because it was so intensive and yeah, experience. so constantly being there uh, to a point where it was like, uh, yeah, it was, it was eating me up inside. So I decided to to go to. Restaurants are family, and family won. <laughs> family always wins. What was that? How did that decision feel like when you made it? Oh, uh, well, leading up to it was probably the, the most difficult decision, especially when something that we love and what we do, right? That uh, restaurants has been my life for 20 years. It's all I know, and I had a lot of great experiences through it. That threw my whole life into it, and uh, yeah making that decision to walk away was tough. Um, but now, uh, after looking back on it, on it uh, man, I've never been happier in my life. What did you gain by losing the restaurant? Time with my kids, communicating. I got to go chaperone my first field trip last week. You know how rad that is, <laughs> those moments. <laughs> uh, riding bikes around the neighborhood with, the, with my, my kids and uh, laughing at the table. A lot of times before it was just hi dad or just single word communication or dad can you pick me up or 
I need this. But now we, they can't wait to tell me about what happened at school or what's going on. And, and we laugh and we do TikTok videos. And it's, it's uh, starting, I don't know, trying to get back all these years that I, I missed. Yeah, because you've been, you, like you said, throwing yourself into work. Um, but, uh, but on the other hand, a chef, that is a chef's life. It's very hard to have a, <laughs> I mean, a, a full-time schedule is like a part-time job for a chef because you're yeah. always working over and on holidays and right. w when everybody else is celebrating, you're working. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a lot of years of sacrifice. I know it's to the point where my kids were, wasn't even expecting me to be around uh, during, during holidays or or being at their their uh, cheerleading competition or anything like that. Uh, so I was like, I need to change this. Uh, they're at their their prime years. I'm still young. I know I can open up more restaurants in the future, uh, but I'll never get these years back. To do what you needed to do was extremely hard, and it took a while. You had to. Yeah. You had to. I went through a point a point of depression for a while. I'm not gonna lie. It was tough. It was. Uh, that's all I knew. I, even more than even more than being being a dad, I knew being a chef first before anything, and that was not true. And to that to look at it as not being a failure of walking away from it, as it just being okay. I'm, I'm to be happy and become a father instead of okay. We are walking away from it. I've seen a change in in them in this last few months. So the way that we communicate. And sometimes I have like an out of body experience as I'm talking with them and I get emotional and just seeing that, whoa, I'm actually having a conversation with my kids. And uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's real. <laughs> when you make local food, you make it rise above all the other good local cooks. Yeah. Do you do something surprising or more of something? How yeah. do you stand out? <laughs> I think it always always starts off with your sourcing, uh, knowing that you're using the best ingredients. You know, very close with your farmers, uh, knowing where that that vegetable was grown, what type of care was in that. Uh, you get to play with we play with fun gadgets, <laughs> so to say, Vitamixes and and. $30,000 ovens and that have special cooking uh, settings. And uh, just being meticulous on every single step of preparation, perfect knife cuts, uh, perfect um, marinating or, or cooking of it, whatever it be, it's just like always at every single step taking the most care about it. So you can't be distracted, even though it's a chaotic situation in a kitchen. Exactly, you, you're caring about this ingredient that uh, that was whether it was butchered or it was it was uh, it was harvested. There was there was a lot of work that got to that point. So you want to be very respectful uh, and see it to the end. You know, I, I heard that you had this really good kimchi dip. So I thought. Oh, good! I can make that. That sounds easy. Then I heard how you make it, and I'm thinking, no way! <laughs> Would you explain how you do it? Yeah, well, the kimchi it, in itself it takes you know it takes over a week to to get it to to the point. Uh, yeah, be fermented properly, uh, and then we we whip the we make a creme fraiche, and we we make sour cream from scratch, and we fold it into an aioli, but. Uh, it's all fancy. If you take, don't you, if you take don't you freeze dry it or something too? Something? <laughs> yeah, we, we 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 dehydrate kimchi uh, and then turn it into a powder and mix it with uh, fried garlic to powder the top of it. <laughs> uh, believe me, I'm very happy with buying store bought kimchi and, <laughs> and best food mayonnaise and putting it together. I'm I'm happy with that. But uh, it's cool to take inspiration from something so simple that we grew up eating and then dive into it and apply all these different techniques to it. You have to cook with your heart. Yeah. But how does that translate into the taste of food? It, I've been still trying to figure it out for years. Uh, I've been learning my, my dad's recipes for so long. And it's like, I cook the same thing as he did. And I, I bet you if we had to cook side by side, like when, if he stirs and I stir, when he adds salt, I'll add salt in the end. He tastes his one, it'll taste better. It's just all these years, he always exudes that, that love into your food. 
and that, it's just care. I think a lot of times when you've asked people, the, what's your death row meal? Or what's, if you had one last dish to taste, it's, it's usually something that's very simple, that comes from, from memory, that's from a family member, whether it's your grandmother or your mother. And it's always something that it's not never some crazy right. Michelin star restaurant or whatever food. It's always something that's, that comes from the heart. At the time of this conversation in February of 2020, Sheldon Simeon and his wife Janice had put their retirement savings into buying a small, lunch-only, takeout-only restaurant in Kahului. When the pandemic hit, they adjusted the restaurant hours and staff size to account for business ups and downs. Mahalo to Sheldon Simeon of Kahului Maui for sharing his stories with us. And thank you for joining us. For PBS Hawaii and Long Story Short, I'm Leslie Wilcox. Aloha Nui. Who are your favorite chefs? Favorite chef all time is still my dad. Hands down. Dad, dad cooks, uh, he has a way to make food. No matter what he cooks, he makes people happy. And that's ultimately, that's all that happens. That, 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 that is the most important thing is just to make some people enjoy your food. Uh, my, the, the local chefs, the, the old school HRC guys have always been my heroes. Uh, Chef Peter Merriman, Chef Roy Yamaguchi, Sam Choi, all those guys paved the way for us. Chef Tom Calicchio from uh, Top Chef Judge. Chef Emeril Lagasse has been an amazing mentor and always has great words to, to encourage you along, see how things are going. Uh, opportunity to meet Gordon Ramsay. You're gonna, you're gonna tell me he's a nice guy, right? Yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe he should stick uh, to not cooking spam again, but uh, yeah. <laughs>